And here we are. So uh, we are starting out now with the ACX Masterclass interview, talking about the Summer 2022 event, which it is an event. It's a unique thing that uh, I believe you gentlemen have not done yet. So I have with me today David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and Dan O'Day. And gentlemen, I'll let you introduce yourselves and uh, give us a little background, if you would, for just a moment or two about who you are, what you're doing, and what's happening with ACX Masterclass. David? Yeah, well, I'm the president of the Rich Palmer Fan Club, and I'm really happy to uh, finally meet you. This is so awesome. Um, the uh, the truth of the matter is, is that Rich has been uh, a friend of mine for quite a while and has been really keyed to understanding voiceover in general and audiobook narration and production specifically. And we, Dan and I, have this uh, uh, sort of partnership that we work on a class called the ACX Masterclass that takes you from step one to step X, uh, from, from not knowing anything to knowing an awful lot about how to be expert at doing audiobook narration. And I'm a voice talent, I'm an actor on camera, and I teach this stuff, and Dan... Uh, is uh, is someone who I've known for a long, long time, Dan. Yeah, yeah I'm someone David has known for a long, long time. That's my bio. <laughs> That's so quite I'm, a bio. Uh, for, uh, I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> former radio guy, and uh, uh, I do a lot. I possibly because I, David knows I do lots, lots of seminars and stuff, like outside in the real world. Uh, a number of years ago, David told me about uh, ACX, which is relatively still new. And I had never heard of it and thought, oh, my God, I, every voiceover person must already know about this. This is incredible. And David said, no, they, they don't. And I said, I know. Why don't we put on a class in the barn? And uh, Save the orphanage. Yep. And here we are. And meanwhile, uh, according to Lassie, somebody fell down the well, but mm -hmm. we don't know who. Yeah. Well, they, you might learn about that later if you're narrating the book. I don't know. Possibly. So the ACX Masterclass, you talked about ACX, that being the, the platform where yeah. a great majority of audiobooks are published, distributed, produced, uh, Maybe you can clarify that a little bit. Uh, before before I get to that, let me put this little information back up on the screen. For those of you joining us on Facebook, if you'd like to make comments, anybody, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, if you'd like to make comments, please do. Those of you on Facebook, please go to StreamYard.com slash Facebook and enable us the ability to see your name. That will help us communicate with you better because it's always nice to call people by name. Yeah. So... ACX, that's the place where it happens. So why this class? So I think uh, a lot of people, because ACX is free to join and it is free to stay a member of, there's no yearly uh, fee to be on the platform. I think that sometimes kind of fools people into thinking, eh, how hard could this be? And uh, if it's free, it's got to be easy. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, is that it is very easy. Uh, just like most things in the world of performance, it looks easy. But the truth of the matter is, is that doing some things on ACX can help you and some things can hurt you. And knowing the difference between those two is what we teach in the ACX Masterclass. We teach you not only how to narrate and produce the final audiobook that's ready for retail sale by Audible, which is, as everybody knows, the, the largest distributor of audiobooks in the world, and the owner of ACX. The A in ACX doesn't stand for Audible, it stands for uh, audiobooks. It's the Audiobook Creation Exchange. But it's owned wholly by Audible, and it was created specifically to give all of Amazon's Kindle authors the ability to find people like you and me to narrate their already written books. And so 
the the goal for Amazon and for Audible is to get more books into the Audible marketplace. Uh, so they don't need to charge. They're going to make money on the sale of the book. Uh, but what they did do is create a really great platform that I wish other voiceover casting platforms could model themselves after or would model themselves after. They don't have the same business uh, situation that that Audible has with ACX. But knowing what to do on a platform that's free is a lot better than just throwing everything up against the wall to see what sticks. And that's what a lot of people do. They just kind of wing it and hope for the best. And hope marketing is not something that I think is a really good idea. That's a term I haven't I haven't heard before. Hope a market. Yeah, hope marketing. a lot of online marketers do that. They yeah. they put up a site or they create a course or they create a product that they want to sell or or write a book or do a podcast, and they hope that people show up. And that's not a great strategy. There 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 probably are very 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 few exceptions to the notion that you can just do what they did in Field of Dreams. And if you build it, they will come. And so, yeah, so the best thing to do is to have a plan. And that's what the ACX Masterclass is. Yeah. And the thing about one thing about ACX, if if you've thought about doing audiobooks, you're a voice talent or an actor or something. And you mentioned ACX to somebody, they might have said, Oh, yeah, you know, I, I signed up, I tried it. And I, I you know, I, I don't even check in anymore. Um, joining ACX is as at least as easy as opening a Gmail account. And because it is so easy that anyone can open one, everybody does. And tech, theoretically, there are lots and lots of narrators actively uh, accepting and seeking work on ACX. In reality, my estimate is, I'm going to guess about 5% of people who opened an ACX account actually are active on it because... They opened it but didn't know what to do, or they opened it and gee, nobody came, or you know, whatever. So, yeah. if you have heard those dire warnings about, uh, basically, if you're, yeah, I tried ACX, yeah, yeah, uh, that was a waste. What that means is they did not learn how to use ACX. They simply opened a profile and off to the races. Yeah, and, and so this this kind of follows a path of what I've seen just in acquaintances of mine. I attended a recent event, a large-scale event, many voice artists, people who are somewhat in the know, um, and even heard from them. I got in, there were so many moving pieces, I was frustrated, I didn't, how to, didn't know how to approach it. I'd really love to narrate audiobooks, but I just didn't know what to do next. So having a plan like this ACX Masterclass um, helps that person go from stage zero to being able to build a profile, audition, and put a, put a book in motion, work with a rights holder. You know, I took the class, uh, four weeks of immersive study, and from point zero to the end of the class, you can walk right on through the process. So some people will tell you it's not possible <laughs> to get a book out that, that quickly. Now, we're not looking for overnight success, but we're looking for a path or a pattern. So tell me what kind of frustrations you've heard people say when it comes to starting the process and trying to get that book on the market. So I, I, I don't know that we have enough time well, true. for all of, the, all of the frustrations that I've heard. Uh, I've heard everything from uh, there's no money in it. Hmm. Okay, I pay my mortgage every month with the money that I make on ACX. And I'm not saying I'm the rule. I'm hardly the rule. The people that say there's no money in it they're the rule, but I don't think it's because of ACX. I think it's because of the effort mm -hmm. or the knowledge or the lack of knowledge that people have when they first get on 
the platform. Believe me, when, when ACX opened its doors in June of 2011, people who had been working as voice talent and actors and audiobook narrators before that for years, many of them looked at how they had things set up and said, that'll never work. That's not going to happen. Well, you know, our students alone are responsible for over 5,000 books that are on sale right now on audible.com having been produced on ACX. And again, my experience has been really profitable and I'm not doing that much work on ACX these days. I'm doing the same amount of work that I've done for the last five years, maybe two, three books a year. And it just adds to my corpus, my, my, uh, 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 what Dan calls accrued assets of projects that are kicking off money. Um, I hear there's no money in it. I hear the equipment is too expensive. You know, we actually, I, I take my coaching hat off and I put my consulting hat on where I basically tell you the answer rather than go, well, what would you think would be a wonderful feeling to have if you wanted to answer that question? You know, which is what I hear a lot of coaches saying, well, what 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 would you like it to be? Yeah, here's what you do. You get this microphone. Let me let me make sure I can take this without knocking anything over. This is the microphone that I use. I'm not using it right now for the video, but this is what I use. But um, but but I am using it. What I'm talking into right now. Yeah, Mike. Mic. Yeah, he's using the mic right now. So um, and and I believe that Rich may have some some version of that as well. I don't know, but uh, I do have that microphone, and I have this one, and they're they're brothers. Great. So I hear that. I hear the editing is onerous. It's grueling is a word that I heard one woman say. Uh, it takes 20 hours for me to produce one hour of finished work, which is what you get paid for if you're doing a, a per finished hour book where you're getting paid for the finished work. That's crazy. Yeah. And it's why I thought it was really important for Dan and I to go get a fat burger and figure out a course that we could put together to offer to people to tell them the path to take and to do so based on data, based on actual results, based on my experience as an Audible approved producer, which is kind of a thing. Uh, it, it makes me appear at the top of search results when people search for people like me. Um, it's it, There's all of these things that you can make mistakes with. And we would like to make sure that you make as few of those mistakes as possible as you get started. Well, and also because, again, once once again, because it's so easy for anyone to start on ACX, most people do it, but they, they don't have a clue what they're doing. For example, as you know, um, on ACX, you have your own profile page that talks about you. And there's, you know, a tab for professional bios and you know, something like that. And I'm going to guess 99% of the people on ACX take their professional resume and upload it to ACX. It never, it never having occurred to them that possibly an author who is looking for someone to produce and narrate their audiobook doesn't really care that you want to swimming trophy in junior high school <laughs> you know but that's a great it, accolade but i don't know how it helps you read yeah. the book you know it's... um and, and so if um th those of you who have heard people say ah oh, you know just as not it most people just don't do the modest amount of work necessary to learn how to use ACX. And that also includes uh, both performance and recording. You know, there are a lot of people came out of radio as David and I did. People came out of voiceover as David did. And they think, I'll just take the skills I have. You know, I'll just, good morning at 712 uh, in the big city and here's so-and-so. I'll just do that. As an audiobook, well, you know what? No one's going to listen to this if it's an audiobook. Um, I mean, maybe that sounds exaggerated, and maybe it is, but it's different. It's different from voiceover performance, and it's different from radio performance. It's not difficult 
to learn the shifts you need to make. But if you're not even aware that you've got to learn it, I wouldn't bet on you succeeding. Yeah, and we get granular. We get really granular. Uh, a lot of the people that are coming to us have skills already in acting or voiceover. A lot of people coming to us are side grading from other pursuits, lawyers, doctors, teachers, um, wanting to do something, people who have done a career for their lives and are now retiring. And so, uh, you know, uh, you know how to put a comment up, right, Rich? Yes. You know how to click on it? Why don't you do that? Because Denise is asking about that very thing. Yeah. How do I put a and comment up? Ah, you just click show. on the comment. There, there you go. go. There you go. There so you go. she's a, a retired elementary school teacher. She wants to know what to do. And it's lovely that she's calling them audibles, which is awesome. I like that. Um, so here's the thing. <clears throat> I look at being an audiobook narrator as being somebody who has a huge palette of little tiny paint pots to dip their brushes into. And you need to know which paint pots to dip, how much color to put on the canvas. Uh, and it varies from everything like the stuff that Dan teaches, which is how to write your profile in a way that it's scannable, that it's not the regurgitation of a, uh, of a resume. It actually helps people choose you as the narrator they want for their books. And I teach how to record, edit, master, choose the right auditions, and, and the performance of both fiction and nonfiction books. So there's all these different things, and we have assembled all of those and put them together so that you can go from, as Denise is a recently retired elementary school teacher, to being an audiobook narrator within a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. okay. It's pretty common for people to take the course you know, we, we, we take we do the course once or twice a year. It's fairly common for somebody to get an offer to do an audiobook, and not from a scam, but an actual offer during the class. Wait, I, I got a challenge. I'm calling an, an audible here. Uh, Are you telling me, do you really expect people to believe that every year at least one of our students during the class books a job? You really get offered a booking. I mean, yeah. uh, booking, uh, we, we often will say, okay, hold on. All right, it's yeah. good. It's good. You don't have to say yes or no this moment. You've got a day or two. Let's talk about this. And it's great. It's like, it, it makes me chuckle and smile. And it's like, okay, we've gotten these people to the point within a week or two of having a magnetic uh, uh, profile that is attracting real rights holders, authors and publishers who want them to do the work. They've also put up a, a sample that sounds great. So, you know, Denise, there's a couple of things that you want to do. And the class is really geared to exactly your situation. Somebody who is not yet doing audiobooks, whether they're already a performer or not, to being somebody who is. And Rich, I think you might have a, a link you can put up rather than just the yeah. title of the of the class, but a link to We're really good at prompting these days. We should. Well, have I'm just, I, if I were doing yeah. this, I'd be like leaving that link up the whole time, but <laughs> that's me. If you go to Rich's link, the course is now uh, at a, at a discount. We're actually paying the first $300 of your, of your tuition. And if you go to Rich's link, richpalmer.media slash ACXMC for ACX masterclass, uh, you, uh, you'll get all the details as to, what the curriculum is, all the materials that you get, uh, the different training that you get. And I want to point out that over the course of the last couple of years, what year did you take the course, Rich? I just took the course in March. For okay, great. Yeah. So you are you were able to take advantage of mm -hmm. a module that, you know, we, we update the class every year based on how the industry is changing how Audible is changing, Amazon is changing, iTunes is changing, ACX itself is changing, the technology is changing. And one of the things that we added in the last couple of years kind of obviates the name of the class to a degree. Oh, yeah. It's called the ACX Masterclass. 
but we spend the last module showing you how to take what you've learned in this class to work on ACX and apply it to and identify those other companies, big publishers, big producers, big casting platforms that, that uh, compete with ACX to teach you how to take what you've learned in terms of narration, production, building your profiles, running your business as an ACX, uh, as an audiobook narrator, and working for some of the most famous companies in the industry. And so where you start is not where you'll end up, but we know exactly where you are and what you need, and that will, will help you get started, Denise. So that's that's my long my longish answer to your question. That's a good longish answer. I just had a conversation with Dan a couple of weeks ago where I, I even said that a person started Rich, I'm ha is it my my is it my speakers? I'm having trouble hearing you. You are. David? Yeah, you're a little bit lower than we are, I think. Is yeah, maybe right? if you boost your gain. I mean, you're the expert. You know more about audio than I, I do, but no still. expertise <laughs> in, in being loud. So possibly that's better. Uh, a little bit. A little yeah, bit. Interesting. Uh, I'm peeking here, so this yeah, is part Dan, of Dan's wow. actually Dan's actually way too loud, yeah. and so am I. Yeah, well. So that's the problem. Yes, that's. So to that end, I mean, I, I was telling Dan just a couple of weeks ago, I think he had asked, you know, what do you think of the class? I said, wait, you know, this is a good way to spend four weeks, you know. Honestly, it was an amazing way to spend four weeks because I saw people from so many different levels that were, um, they were either starting out, never even had a microphone plugged into a computer, or I had people, you know, I have a background in audio. I've been doing it my whole life. You can't tell from the volume of my mic, apparently. But <laughs> but there are people that are starting out with absolutely zero skill set. And at the end of the class, they are beaming because they know how to record. They know how to put a great profile together. They know how to communicate with the people they're working with in mm -hmm. a very professional manner and asking the right questions, saying the right things and setting themselves up as advocates for themselves to be successful. So, you know, what I told Dan, I said, what I saw was a person just starting out. They can do this because yeah. it's all laid out in this four week program. Now, you two are doing something unique because this time we're seeing a home study version. So tell me about your, your thoughts on that. Why, why did you move to that direction? Well, we have people. Well, actually, I don't know anybody that this doesn't apply to. Uh, you know, we've been through some really tough times the last couple of years with the pandemic and with with uh, politics and world events. Uh, everybody's life at some point in time, everybody's life gets lifey. You know, it's like things happen. Uh, it's summertime here in the United States. And the notion that you, I'm, I'm hearing myself coming back all of a sudden. Did somebody turn their, their speakers up or something? No. I don't know, not you, Dan. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the path at which you take this course does not require you to be at a particular uh, point at a particular time, like it was for your class. We did live classes, but we recorded those classes. Mm -hmm. And we're taking these most recent recordings and we're allowing people to take the class at whatever pace they like and whenever they like. Now, we release everything for four weeks on a daily basis, layering on top of what we've already released for the training. And we do this in a way that you can access it whenever you want. So even if you can't start, and by the way, the course starts this Monday. Um, if you, if you, that, and then what that means is the course starts the release. And again, I'm hearing myself coming back. I don't know why, but um, you know, the, the, the way you take the class is entirely up to you. Yeah. If, if you want, see what we did is, we did when we did the live class earlier this year, everything that we do live is recorded on video and audio. And so when you take the home study version, 
you're taking the same class. And we release, you know, on the night when we did it live, when we had our first um, session about making a profile, um, you see that the same night that other people saw it. Unless you want to wait because it is recorded so you can do it at your leisure. But the thing about, um, see, what I, there was a time when if I heard that offer, I would say, ah, nah, I don't, I don't want to all be pre-recorded. I want to be live. That'd be, be exciting, exciting and vibrant. The thing is, these are all recorded live. And when you're watching it, it absolutely feels like you're there. The only difference is you can't chat with your classmates in the chat function, but you're still part of the community. You're still part of the mastermind group and you can follow the schedule that we give you and do it in four weeks. You can do it next year. You know, it, it's really up to you. Uh, also, Denise, I have a, uh, I want to answer your question. What your, what would be your first step uh, to look into doing audibles? Do you like telling stories? The answer is no. Then we're done. Um, if you do like telling stories, I have this little test. Have you ever successfully told a, st a story to a child? Have I, I bet successfully, you successfully told a story to a class filled with ch children. Yeah. Yeah. She has, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, because if you have, if you've, told a story to a child and the child did not run screaming from the room, but actually he was listening. Okay. That's, you know, we're, we're assuming you have no major uh, speech problems uh, that, you know, you're, you, that your vision, you don't need fantastic vision, but if you can't see the screen or something, you know, the monitor, that, that would be a problem. But otherwise, you, you and, and Denise said yes to both questions. So, um, and also, we, Denise, we like people who, like you who brag uh, about their accomplishments. We, we need you in there because now we can brag about you too. So, we, yeah, well, Denise uh, took the class and she went to elementary school. Oh, she taught elementary she school. Taught I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you've also alluded to the fact. Hey, that... uh, Rich, time yeah. out. Time out. I want you to click on the settings gear on your StreamYard dashboard. And then I want you to go to the audio tab. And I want you to look at the setting level of the microphone and see if you can raise it a little bit. Yeah, let's do that. Let's it's see not that your works. it's not your peaking on whatever board you're on. It's what what yeah, uh, what's, what StreamYard has. Yeah. Has that helped? It has. Well, All right. The, oh, it does help? Okay. Well, there's also, there for the future, there's also an option to automatically adjust volume. Yeah, don't do that. And yeah. if it's you're having a problem and it's checked, uncheck it. Yeah, that I don't do. So hopefully that's better. A little bit. So uh, you alluded to some, some things that I think are very important for a prospective student to know, a participant of this class, and that is that they have a mastermind group, which my experience has has told me that people are able to get in and discuss and ask questions and support each other. So unlike a lot of home study classes, this one, you're not alone. You, you have a network of people working with you, supporting you, as well as these two fine coaches who are sharing information with you to help you get to where you need to go next. Yeah, that's a good point. It's not just a matter of, oh, it's, it's home study. So I go online and I check some things and then I move forward. Everybody's with you. You know, um, you're part of the community of the people in your class in the upcoming home study class. You're going to have your own private mastermind group just for the class. And a few weeks after the class ends, we're going to invite you to join our permanent, really cool mastermind group for audiobook narrators. Um, it's well over 500 uh, narrators there. And they have run into whatever problem you might ever run into 
uh, a setting on audacity or uh, I'm hearing a hum or whatever. People in the class already have experienced it and they jump in and answer. Yeah. Um, and we've been kind of lying to you uh, this whole session uh, where everything is recorded uh, and you don't have to worry about being anywhere live. You actually oh. have to one time, one time. And that's when the class is over a week after the class, has, after we've ceased, uh, we've, we've given you the final uh, update in all of the curriculum. We do hold a live uh, Q&A call for as long as it takes. Usually they're th two, three, four hours. As long as it takes for people to ask any questions that they either haven't had answered by the curriculum itself, which is becoming more rare, or they haven't had answered in the mastermind throughout the entire month of the release of the content, uh, you know, they can ask about those things in that live class. And if even if you can't make that, you can email us your questions and we'll ask them for you. And then, of course, we're going to record that. And so you can see it and hear it uh, in the recording or you can attend it live. And I just want to let people know that there's, as, as Rich has on the screen, there's a deadline coming up. Uh, this course is going to be, this is our registration week. So we have registration open right now at the at the link that Rich will put. Hey, could you type that into the, or copy and paste it into the, the discussion, Rich, uh, the link? That's That'd a good, be a good idea. idea. Yeah, let's put um, that in there But well. we're, we're giving you a special price through as we're recording this tomorrow night at 9 p.m. And we're paying the first $300 of your tuition, which is a very significant uh, uh, sort of gift in terms of how much it saves you. And this is a course that we've had more than one uh, student say, I paid for it with my first book. Uh, we have one, uh, one woman who's been doing audiobooks now for five years, six years. And that was her comment uh, the week after the course ended because she booked a per finished hour, uh, which we can talk about how you get paid. She booked a per finished hour book for twenty five hundred dollars. So, uh, we and, and, and saying that, please, every anyone watching this right now, that is not typical. That's yeah. that's a home run, mm -hmm. first time up at great. You might do it too, but we are not saying that take the that you should take the class and your very first book will make you a whole lot of money right yeah so yeah. um and there's a number there's, of different ways potential. that you get paid yeah, there's a number of different ways you get paid uh being paid per finished hour of the book if you have a 10-hour book and you're making 250 dollars per hour you'll make 2500 dollars on the book that's one way of getting paid but there's another alternate two actually uh one is royalty share where as the book sells you and the author split royalties that Audible pays you. And uh, the other one is sort of a combination hybrid of the two where you have not only a royalty share, but you also have a certain amount of money per finished hour that you're paid to actually produce and narrate the book up front. So there's a lot of different ways to make money and there's a lot of different ways to never make a dime. And mostly those ways are to think, how hard could this be? This is like, this doesn't make sense to me in terms of, I can do this. I understand how this all works. Okay, great. I don't want you, if that's how you're thinking, to become a member of that group of people who tried and then didn't succeed on ACX and then attribute that to ACX or Audible or Amazon or audiobooks in general, because there are plenty of people who make their living yeah. doing audiobook narration. And the, 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 I believe the second most important thing um, for you, your success is to stop thinking like a potential employee who's applying for a job and hoping they hire you. And especially if, if you have an acting background, oh my God, you know, they're, they're, they're offering me you know, something you get all excited. You know, like you've, if you're, uh, I have a lot of actor friends and a lot of them, no matter how successful, if they're not working today, they think their career is in ruins, you know? And all of this is to say that to six, 
it's very hard to succeed on ACX without changing your mindset so that you're thinking about your target audience, the rights holders, the authors, the publishers, um, and how are they perceiving you? You know, with the we get uh, we get so, sometimes people will politely disagree with us at, at a really loud voice, and often it's people who are or used to be audio engineers and audio engineers can do all kinds of magic that I can't do. Okay. The one thing audio engineers typically are solitary people. They, I'm not saying they don't have the capacity for emp for empathy, but their job and their lifestyle does not require them to be empathetic very much because it's a matter now let me try it again oh, okay get you know keep the settings you know when's the last time if you're if you're a voice talent when's the last time an engineer said to you sorry are you, are you comfortable there should i you want some more light you know they're thinking about themselves and i'm really not criticizing them that's the the personality so when they do it, they, you know, for example, a, a, a lot of voiceover people, if they have a web page, they will list and or show photos of the equipment they use. And then they go on ACX and they want to you know, talk about the equipment. The author doesn't care. When's, those of you who like, who, who like to read a lot, you know, I've read books in your life. How many times did you find yourself wondering what kind of typewriter did that guy use or what kind of word processor did that person? I wonder if he wrote it on a Mac or a P no, it's that's irrelevant, but you go to go to ACX, look at profiles and I, I will wager the honor the very first one you land on. We'll talk about their equipment even though authors don't don't know don't care so yeah and the equipment that we recommend is not thousands and thousands of dollars on a bad day on amazon to get the microphone the earbuds the mic stand that we recommend uh we give you that mic sock that rich has on his microphone as a welcoming gift um you know on a bad day on amazon to buy everything it's going to cost you 200 bucks and that is a very easy for most people if they're really wanting to start a new chapter in their lives and they want to be prepared in a way and this is the equipment i use i eat my own dog food to quote a, a, a famous corporate statement you know that's not a big price to ask to set yourself up for success in a brand new chapter in your life so we take you through everything and if there's something we discover that people need like at one point, people were like, well, you keep talking about how you message the rights holders, how you tell them that you're done with a chapter or how you talk to them about, uh, uh, you know, negotiating the fee that you're going to get for the book or can I get the manuscript or I have a question about a character. Do you, you keep talking about these messages that you're using. Do you ha are those available? Do you can you share those? Yeah, I put together the entire set of nearly 50 messages that I send at some point during the process of producing the book. And we give them to you and you can just copy and paste them and, or you can change them to suit you. But the point is at least you have a starting point. When we discover something that needs to be added to the curriculum, we just simply add it to the curriculum and you benefit from that. And the templates are, are situation specific um, rather than you, you sitting down and figuring out what to say, composing your reply when a rights holder says to you, um, yeah, listen, I'll, can we go back and do chat redo chapters three and four? I've, I've added a paragraph or whatever. Um, all 
virtually all of these are templates for communicating with your rights holder. Now, whenever you have to do that, you can do what I do. I'm not on ACX, but in life, if I have to write an email about some business thing, I'll sit down and kill two hours trying to figure out the good wording. And then the next time I have that exact same question or, pro or, or problem from somebody, I'll sit down and start all over, take two hours. David, being very lazy, uh, thought, I'm just going to do this once. And that, that's, that's one of the most use. valuable <laughs> tips I can imagine. Yeah. Is Wait, did you just say that's one of the most valuable tips you can imagine? That's, that's what I thought I heard. Yes. That's is that what I what thought you? I heard, too. <laughs> yeah. What have you done with Dan? <laughs> Um, one of the most valuable tips I can imagine coming from David. Got it. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I, it's, we're, well, Rich, you, you've seen it in action, but it's just that I, I think when people hear about that part, oh, that sounds nice. It, if something can save you a couple of hours on a given day, and not only the writing, but first of all, deciding what, What's my answer going to be? What's my answer going to be when he, when he, they want to dicker about price, mm -hmm. you know, all, all, anything that might come up, um, it's already there. And that, that to me is, is a, one of the most valuable things about the class, even though it's not one of the sexiest. Yeah. It's a valuable point. I, I've used it. I have it in a library that is accessible to me because it's part of the tools of the course. And, you know, I had, I had an offer last week. Wasn't quite what I would have expected it should have been. I knew exactly where to go in the library to pick up that template. I customized it based on the conversation I was going to have, but everything was laid out five minutes later. It's in the stream. Response is back 15 minutes later, we're moving forward. Right. Yeah. So it's valuable. It's a testimony that, you know, this is a catalog of information as well as tips, resources. It's, it's really a, a full menu of what it takes to go from zero to 60. And I'd also like to point out that although Rich's conversation ended up in moving forward, it may end up in you deciding, I don't want to do this. This doesn't fit with my rule set. And there are messages in the oh. in the templates for that. Um, but the point is, some people are afraid of saying no. They're afraid that if they turn down a project or turn down work, that somewhere there's a permanent record that all the authors and rights holders will get together and say, never hire John Smith or Jane Smith again because they said no to me. That's a fear that most uh, actors and voice talent have. If I say no to a project, I'm violating some universal rule. And the truth of the matter is you have to be careful about the one commodity that you're selling, and that is your time. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful not to drop into a project that's going to suck your time away that you could put towards a project that would be profitable. So we talk about that in the class. We talk about how to judge whether or not you should even audition for a project. We talk about the scams that had have proliferated on ACX over the years. You know, ACX is such a beautiful situation. It's attracted scammers. And we not only talk about what to look for in scams, one of our graduates is one of the most often quoted experts now on what scams look like, Bob McCoy. Mm -hmm. And we also talk to someone who's created a tool that helps you avoid the scams, helps you recognize different titles and projects for what they are. So we're not only helping you uh, gather as many opportunities as possible, we're also there to help you avoid the pitfalls, avoid the potholes in the process. Uh, if we can talk for a moment about, uh, 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 go back to equipment. Um, David mentioned the mic that we use, but no more than 200 bucks, probably less on Amazon. Um, some people watching this are thinking, oh, I, I, I'm guessing, 
start thinking, oh, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, well, that's that's around what I paid for my my snowball or my Yeti. Those aren't good. Those are not going to give you the quality you need for audiobooks. And a lot of people are shocked because, well, I do my podcast on my snowball. That's fine. That's cute. You know, but for when people are listening to a story in their earbuds for hours, it's got to be a, a it's got to be a, a, a high quality sound that is pleasant to them. And I've got um, a Yeti that's sitting on my cabinet over there. It is sitting next to my Mac Plus from 1987. I, I use them equally now. It's you roughly know, the it, same size. Uh, yeah. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, I lo it's such a cute microphone, you know? But no more. Yeah. Well, and there's, there's part of the value, too, is it, it's not just saying get into the stream and move. It's knowing what's, what's important now, what's important next, what's important to come. But we're, you're going to release these course materials as it's important for that person to digest them. Yeah, we don't we deliberately uh, do not overwhelm it. it, it we, we little pieces, you know, mm -hmm. little bites and we we kind of trick you, you know, you're just oh, OK, fine. And for after four weeks, holy cow, I just produced an audio book. And yeah. that's and we know cow. what you want. We know what you want. We know yeah. you want to know how to make an audio book right now. And the way we layer or drip the content to you is designed to build, it's like building a house. You build a foundation, the basement or the foundation or whatever, and then you start to build things on top of it, knowing that what you're already learning is going to support the additional uh, materials. And we do it in such a way that isn't what, you know, doesn't necessarily align with what you really want. What microphone do I use? How do I do nonfiction books? Because I don't want to take on fiction, whatever. Your order of business isn't necessarily, even though in your head it is, it isn't necessarily the most optimal for your learning the whole process. And so we've honed and refined this. We've been doing this for over, uh, over eight years now. And we've honed and refined this to the point where we've rearranged things, we've added things, we've taken things out. A while back, we were teaching you about a plugin that you needed that you don't need anymore because it's already included in the software that we recommend, which is free, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and the process that we use is designed, the, the process of recording, editing, and mastering is designed, again, to build on what we've already given you and to reduce that 20 hours of work for every one hour of finished product to three hours of work. For every one hour of finished product and you can't get there unless you know why you need to do things in this particular fashion in the last couple of years we've added a new tool that makes you look like a genius to authors and uh, publishers your rights holders it's called positron we show you how it works we show you why it's so exciting to proof your work when you give it to your rights holder to go over because it's their baby, you know, you're you're swaddling their baby in in a lovely blanket and 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 you're taking care of it and you're bringing it to a different life. Uh, you want them to know that you care and we help you show up uh, as though you're a genius. So, you know, I think the one thing, Rich, and please feel free to just interrupt me if you got a, a question. It's more urgent. Um, we've danced around it. The one thing that's on the minds of almost everyone viewing this is, yeah, but I hear the editing is a nightmare. I mean, you know, David mentioned the woman who took 20 hours, whatever. And by the way, she now, well, I won't, I won't say it. I, I shouldn't say that she now teaches it. Um, but, um, I, I, I 
in my experience, most people who, especially if you don't come from the broadcast industry or voiceover, most people are terrified of it. And even people in the business because they've been told, mm -hmm. oh, don't do it. Took, I tried it. You know, it took me 20 hours for a finished hour, which is crazy. You have to, you have to really try hard to work that slowly. Um, but I understand if, if you are listening to this and thinking, yeah, it all sounds good. These guys seem okay. I don't know about David. Seems a little sketchy. Um, but I, I, I've never edited audio. I, I've been in studios. I, I see what they're doing, and it's what? You know, what? It's not difficult. the The challenge is something that the, our brains do to us. When there is a puzzle that's important to you, so when you hear, no, there's a much faster way to record and edit than punch and roll, which it has been the industry standard for traditional voiceover. Mm -hmm. um, when you hear that, your brain spins around like, like a hard disk or something looking for a picture. I wonder, but you have no idea what it's like and you can't picture it. So it just keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and making you more and more scared. Um, it's, I, I've yet to hear someone say they, couldn't do it you know they they couldn't learn it's just it's not difficult and I, and again um if you talk to an engineer we're talking about recording the human voice without any kind of processing and the editing is in a linear fashion meaning you're not going back and oh, let's listen to this let me replace it well can we let's listen to both takes or all five takes or something we don't do that um, it's in a linear fashion and it's actually, if I'll be interested to hear if you guys agree or disagree, editing audio is a visual process. In today's uh, world, it absolutely is. Which sound, if you've never done it, it sounds crazy, right. Right. but it's, it's pretty much like editing a Microsoft word doc, except it nowhere near as aggravating. And to this point, a person who has never done this before can, within this four-week period of learning, be able to start that process and understand from front to back and back to front what they've done because it is the process of storytelling and they're not interrupting themselves through that process. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is an editing process that many people don't understand because they haven't tried it. But those who have never tried it may benefit the most. Those who have no experience may benefit the most because it is such a simple, linear process. Tell the yeah. story. Read the story. Share your information. Don't worry about the editing. This class will tell you how to get there. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the biggest value I saw for that new learner. In, in, in class, <clears throat> I... I always assume and or sense that a number of people are really nervous when we come up to week three, which is when we teach the editing, recording and editing. And so there, you know, there is a lot of tension uh, that night. Afterward, here's the most common comment we get. That's it? That. That, that that's it and yeah that's it it's not difficult but if you don't know what to do then probably you're not going to do it right yeah and many people and have come about, out of that class saying i can't wait to do that that's which great i found very exciting that's nice. reading the chat <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to do um that. We're, we're coming up on the top of the we hour are. here we're very close and I've got a bail, but uh, I just wanted to let you know that the ACX Masterclass for me is one of the most satisfying and supportive endeavors that I've had in my life. And nothing gives me more pleasure than watching one of our students 
just run with it, just go crazy with it. We've had many, many students who have ended up doing dozens and dozens of books. We have one uh, student who we talk about all the time, J. Rodney Turner, who's now released over 200 books since he started with us in our very first class. And now he's very active in the world of audiobooks, working with big publishers. He's working with a publisher right now. They're redoing the entire Zane Grey uh, oeuvre, uh, you know, his entire collection of titles, and he's the voice. I'm so proud of him. Yes. Um, we have a, an Audi uh, Award nominee. Audis are kind of like the, the uh, Emmy or Oscar or Clio of the, uh, of the audiobook world with people who have built their own publishing and production businesses based on what they learned in the class and what they learned working with with other publishers and producers. Uh, we have one guy who's created a whole company around visual audiobooks who's a, a, a graduate of the class. And again, as Dan said, this is not the norm. You know, if you don't apply it, and we have no way of guaranteeing how engaged you'll be with the class, a lot of people make the mistake of having a bucket list item that says, sign up for the ACX Masterclass. Well, it should be sign up and learn, learn. you know, consume the content of the ACX Masterclass. Because if you don't engage, it's not going to work for you. And the danger is you then blame it on ACX or Audible or us. And so what I would, if, you, if this is something that you really want to do, if this is something that really speaks to you, if this is something like wow, I would love to be an audiobook narrator. That fascinates me. I love using, I love listening to audiobooks. I want to be that person. Really consider doing it and consider doing it by tomorrow night at nine o'clock as we right. record this Tuesday night uh, at nine because you'll get it for $300 less. So that's all I wanted to say. And you bring the link. He'll put it back up here soon. So the, the $300, uh, it's not really a discount. It's, it's David and I paying the first 300 for you. That offer expires Tuesday night. Is it 9 p.m. Pacific, David? Yeah. Uh, midnight Eastern. And then reg and then it goes to a, a regular full price tuition. <laughs> okay, I gotta I gotta do a timeout here. That yeah. banner is incorrect. It's midnight. That banner is Eastern. incorrect. It should be midnight Eastern. Yes. Yeah. So he'll yeah. fix that, but go ahead, Dan. Ah, I'll okay. fix that. Um you know, well, I, as as both Dave and Rich know, uh, it's rare for me to do anything with a calendar and get it right. Apparently, <laughs> I never learned calendar. Um, but I don't know if it even occurred. I don't think it occurred to me, David, when you and I started the class, that there would be some people who would create full-time businesses based on it. I mean, by that, I mean, uh, it's a full-time business if you spend all your time recording audiobooks and getting paid. That's good. And it didn't, I, I figured uh, uh, some would, most wouldn't. But we've had people who, as David said, they took what they learned and they took it much further. They, there are at least three people three, four, five, I, I don't know what the total is. People who their own companies uh, springboarded off of what they learned about audiobooks, and they're still working with audiobooks, but they're very entrepreneur-like, so they have created their own framework to do something. And yeah. that's, it's really I, I, I yeah. was amazed by that when it started happening. And um, I think I still am, but I, I try to be blasé. <laughs> well, what we can do is is ask you to go to richpalmer.media slash ACXMC. Watch the two-minute video that's on the page. If you have, if you're watching now or watching this recording and you have not watched the three videos about the ACX Masterclass, please do. And remember, it cuts off tomorrow. The early bird pricing cuts off tomorrow, so you want to get in for that special pricing. Thank you both so very much for being with me today, sharing some of your insights, sharing some of your knowledge. Uh, I really appreciate your time, and I hope that those watching have uh, gained something that will pique their interest and move them over to take a bigger look. Thank, Thank you for having us, Rich.
Appreciate you. Okay. See you soon.